Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and it's my pleasure to walk you through two of the most exciting new features in InDesign CS6. And it, these features are basically revolving around the concept that no longer are we trapped or limited to a world where everything's the same size. If you think about a print layout, well, you have your traditional sizes that you always work in, but now, even in print, it's becoming more and more important to be flexible so that when your client changes their mind and they want a different layout or different orientation, you can quickly and easily adapt. And of course, for digital publishing, we're working with different screen sizes and different resolutions, and we need to adapt to that as well. Now, if you think about how this relates to the web, for example, with HTML and HTML5, well, a user could easily just change their browser window, and they expect your web page or content to change accordingly. Well, now the same thing applies when we're working with InDesign documents, whether it be for print or digital output for tablets. So let's take a look. Liquid Layout is a new feature in InDesign CS6 that's HTML5 based that allows us to quickly and easily change the way our content will adjust based on the new size of the page or screen size. Now, there are different rules for setting this up. So when I go to Liquid Layout, there's a new panel for it. Depending on how I choose to work, I can use one of multiple rules. So for example, I have this object selected, and the rule that's set for this object is object-based. But let's go through them one by one. So first of all, off means the object will not change no matter what happens to the page. Scale is probably the easiest one to understand. If you set your content to scale, that means that the content will scale based on the page size. It will all scale as one grouped object or scale uniformly. And although this is the easiest one, it's probably not the best one for most cases. Recenter, similar to scale, will just basically recenter the content on the page, but it won't scale it. It'll just basically put everything back in the center of the new page size or orientation. And again, it works, but not probably the best solution for most layouts. Now we get to object-based and guide-based, and these are probably the ones you're going to use the most. With object-based, you're setting some constraints on how it will resize. Will it resize the height? Will it resize the width? Will it, you know, when it resizes with the page? And whether or not you pin it so that it, how it moves around on the page. It's pinned to the top and right in this case, so it will not move from the top or right side of the page. So if the page gets wider, that content will move wider with it to the right. And if the content gets taller or the page gets taller, the content will stay pinned to where it is at the top. So you control this on an object by object basis based on how you want your content to change when that page orientation or size changes. And of course, the last one is guide-based. And when you do a guide-based workflow, you're basically pulling out ruler guides and determining how you want these objects to grow based on where you put the guides. So the guide-based workflow works as well, but I think, I think most people will prefer an object-based workflow. Again, you have plenty of flexibility to choose whichever one you want. Now, how can you test this? In other words, without physically changing my page size or orientation, how will I know whether or not these rules are, are working the way I would like them to work? Well, we've done something new with the page tool. If you grab your page tool, you can now just grab the corners of your pages or the, any one of the handles, and you can change temporarily the page in the orientation that you want to see your content basically become liquid based on your rules. So you can see, hey, if I made this page wider, what would happen to my content? How would my content be affected? How would it change? If I made the page shorter, how short can I go before I start cutting things off? So you get to basically choose and test on a page-by-page -page basis how you want this content to work. And as soon as I let go, it snaps back to the actual page size. So that's liquid layout. What's alternate layout? Alternate layout is taking what we've done in liquid layout and actually putting it to work with an alternate layout inside your document. So let's go over to our pages panel, which is the best way to view or work with alternate layouts. So as you know, in a digital publishing workflow, you're typically creating at least two layouts based on your screen resolution or screen orientation. 
So in this case, we have a, a, a iPad sized vertical layout. And of course, I'm gonna want the user to be able to turn their tablet at any time. And therefore I want the horizontal view as well. In the past, this would mean creating a new document just to get this effect. Now I can do this with liquid layout and alternate layouts in the same document. So right here from the pages panel on this one layout, I can just simply say create alternate layout. And when I say create alternate layout, it automatically detected that, hey, you've got a vertical layout. I'm assuming you want a horizontal version of that. But if I didn't, I can choose whatever I want, page sizes, orientations, and it would do it for me. So I'll just click OK, and it will create that alternate layout for me. Very cool. I can double click to go to one of those pages and test it and see it, or double click to go back to the vertical page as well. But you're not limited to just two layouts in the same document or one additional alternate. You can have as many alternates as you want. So for example, now that I've got this horizontal view, what if I'm working with a different screen resolution or a different screen um, aspect ratio? Let's create another alternate layout. And this time we'll work with, for example, the zoom. And we'll work with a vertical one. Now the zoom, or let's make this actually the Galaxy tab. That's the other tablet that I work with the most. So we have a Galaxy tab layout, which is more 16 by nine. So when we click OK, it will build that alternate layout for the Galaxy tab in a 16 by nine orientation versus the original four by three. And of course, we wouldn't stop there. We would create one more alternate layout in this case for the same thing, but we would make it the wide one. Galaxy tab, horizontal. So we'll click OK, and that will create the horizontal view for the Galaxy tab as well. So we have the ability to quickly and easily make these documents, make these alternate layouts, and keep them within the same document. And one more user tip, just in case you were wondering, hey, do I have to look at the Pages panel every time I want to look at the other layout? Well, the other layouts are in the same document. If you scroll down, you'll actually see them. So we'll start to see the horizontal one. But I like to see them side by side like the Pages panel does. So I have the ability now in InDesign CS6 to give me a split layout view. And with the split layout view, I can look at one layout or one side and toggle to the other side. And we'll go ahead and fit that. Let's go all the way up here, or all the way down, I should say. And there we are. And we can see any adjustments that need to be made. For example, the type got a little cut off on that one. We can make the adjustment right there, as well as the one for the logo. So we're actually working on two different views of the same document, two different layouts and alternate layouts in the same InDesign document, but with a side-by-side -side view like we would want to see it. So as you can see, these are great enhancements, liquid layout and alternate layouts in InDesign CS6 that will improve both your print and digital workflows. Thanks again for watching. My name's Terry White.